So I am, uh, yes, I am kneeling on the ground. Uh, this was the easiest way to show you the size difference in the compressor housings. So this right here, that's your factory size. It is a twin blade. Um, you know, I'm no turbo expert on exactly what that design is called, but very aggressive for how small it is. Whereas this one, a little bit different. See, this one actually has blades and then another set of blades behind it, if you can see that. So it's kind of an interesting design. Uh, you can order these from Liver Noise or um, Gearhead, I believe it is. Borg, or not Borg Warner. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm spacing out here. It's the end of the day. Garrett is the manufacturer of these turbos. Now, obviously, they see, say EcoBoost Plus 2. Basically, it is a stage 2 turbo for the EcoBoost platform. Now, these are, in fact, uh, the same turbos found on the EcoBoost F-150, although the engines do slightly differ. So it's not going to be the exact same manifolds or um, set up in general, but the turbos are going to be nearly identical. So I just thought I would show you guys, I'll, uh, I'll zoom back here. Just thought I would show you guys the size difference in these. Kind of interesting. Stage two gearhead turbos. Tell you guys what. These are supposed to be a direct bolt-on, which uh, they are, but it, um, it's not just as simple as bolting them on. Uh, okay, you are going to have to bend your main coolant line. Now, it does not have a port on the bottom like the factory style, so I'll bring you around here. They actually give you a, and I might not be able to pick that up on the camera, but... Basically, they give you another uh, banjo line with a metal section, and then it turns into stainless, as you can see here. So you got a stainless line, and then you actually have to cut your existing line that normally runs to the front under this one. You're going to have to cut it, and then I put like a really hard bend on it with a pipe bender, and then they give you... It, it is a heavy-duty hose, so I have no doubts of that holding, but... A little bit of uh, fab, I guess I would say. And then, as far as that's concerned, the bottom d um, oil dump or oil drain. Okay, it, it, it doesn't really line up. I'm going to be honest, you guys. I had to really bend it and pry on it to get the bolts in there lined up. I got some nice stainless hardware in there should hold together pretty well. Um, this is the front turbo. This was uh, probably the most challenging. Now we'll go around to the back turbo. This one was nowhere near as bad. Um, one thing I will say is that your oil feed, okay? So I had to put a really aggressive up and over bend on it because it'll run into this wastegate arm, which is accentuated. Now, I don't know if they did that so in hopes that you could run it underneath, but I promise it does not fit underneath and there's no way to bend it down far enough because you got a, a coolant inlet right here. So you are gonna have to go up and over around in there. It's, it's not super difficult to bend this pipe. If you get a nice uh, pipe benders, like a three stage, that's got like the long handles on it, you can create nice factory looking bends. Um, you know, I can sand the pipe, clean it up, maybe blast it with some paint. You know, these are original, but they lock in, they work. Um, the heat shield, you're just gonna have to bend back just a little bit. You can see my screwdriver marks so that the wastegate arm doesn't hit it. Um, but stage two turbos are in. 
Just wanted to give you guys an update on everything, kind of show you how it's going, because it is going. This was a long project. Now, if you guys are planning on um, doing these turbo upgrades in your garage at home or something of the sort like that, it's um, it's a fair amount of work, and it's it's not, like I said, it, it's not just as simple as everything lines up, everything bolts up, but... It isn't insanely challenging. It's just very, very tedious. So again, the compressor side is much larger and they, they look factory. I mean, you almost can't tell. So the only other thing I do want to touch on guys, and let me move this light here or let me drop it. One of the two. Um, one thing I do want to touch on is we are going to, we have a plug back here that's very, very challenging to get to. Um, there was a heat shield in the way here, but that heat shield does not fit with the bracket due to the fact that we have that stainless coolant line that comes out of the bottom of the turbo. So I, I think that this bolt hole here was actually still for that elbow bracket. And I was thinking about after the fact, I can probably sneak in this elbow bracket and the heat shield. But what I'm going to do and what I would advise you guys to do if you're in a situation where you did unplug that is I would wait until that harness is reconnected and then mount that stuff back up. So, well, that's a wrap for tonight. Um, tomorrow we're going to finish up all the bolt-ons and we're going to drop the car back down on it. And uh, it'll be multiple hours getting it all hooked back up and, and bolted back up. But uh, should be able to drive it within the next couple days here. I cannot wait to get this thing on the dyno. We got our uh, dyno session scheduled. There will be good video footage on that as well. All right, guys, I'm out.